Can we take a look at these absolutely fucking handsome nerds? Look at them. I see not one, not two, not three, but four absolute animals. Some a little younger and more handsome than the others, but that's all good. <laughs> Yona Sotala is gonna kick things off for us today as he is facing uh, XY. I'm gonna take a look at my audio. I think 27 is good. Apparently, the Chinese fans are very excited to see XY duke it out with Cero. Because XY, his mentality, guys, on the player chart is higher than Cero's mentality. I believe Cero got a 9 from them. XY has a 10. Let's take a look. I believe Cero started the season off as a 93. And then they increased him and boosted him to a 94. This is XY. He is a 58 overall. And you guys can see a 6 for strategy, 6 for offense, 6 for micro, 6 for macro, a 7 for defense, and a 10 for mentality. He was 97 last week? Holy smokes. I didn't know that. Who did we play last week? Strategy 10, macro 10, mentality 9. So XY has the better mentality. 97? <laughs> this is a very unique uh, pie, by the way, in that octagon. You don't often see one guy completely dominating the other, but then that underdog still being better in one thing. 97 is mental. Rainer is molding. Oh, Rainer is on Basilisk as well, guys. We are a team. Keep in mind that we are a team. We encourage one another. And I'm sure that Rainer is very happy for Saro's rating. Obviously, today is going to be a little bit of a chill broadcast, guys. I like to commentate in a way that I think is somewhat similar to professional sports. What I've always hated was this esports casting where every game is supposed to be ultra hype and you celebrate every victory like you celebrate the other victories, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like if Real Madrid takes a 1 0 lead against Sociedad at home. That is not the same reaction as Real Madrid taking a 1-0 lead against Man City in the semi-finals of the Champions League. Obviously, I think we are big favorites here. But we're going to have some fun. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. In the top left side of Neo Humanity, we took a look at the main base of XY representing Invictus Gaming. Bottom right side, an animal. Hailing from Finland, he is our very own. Iona Sotala. So today, the order of players, I believe, is Cero, Raynor, Trigger. Yes, that is what I settled for. I am the one who decides who comes out in what order, uh, as I am the captain. And I was kind of doing it in... Um, how do you say that? In cooperation with the players at first. Cero tilting? Why is Cero tilting? He went to uh, spawning pool first, by the way. So Cero may be somewhat worried. About getting two racks or three racks here, I don't know. At first I was doing it together with the players. But obviously there is very little actual strategy that comes into play in this phase in the tournament. Where you don't get any info on maps. You don't get any info on who seats anything where. So basically I'm just the one who decides the order. And I've got a method for deciding the order. But I do not share that with anyone. Those are top secret CIA classified files. Yona knows the win rate of 3 Rex. It's very high. Not quite as high as uh, the 3 Rex in TVP, but proxy 2 Rex or 3 Rex in this matchup, it does rarely lose. Sarah get a haircut? I don't see it, but maybe. They always do this, by the way. They, they zoom in on these sponsors. Literally every single best of two. It's like, and then they always select them one by one. I guess the Chinese casters go hype over it. And call them out like they are John Anik in his prime. Even though I hope for John Anik that he didn't reach his prime yet. Because I'm still not that big of a fan, guys. I preferred Goldberg. No one knows what I'm talking about. Other than six ultra buff nerds that are eating protein while we speak. So it's a Reaper opening here for XY. He's going to send the Reaper to the other side of the map. Sarah has two Zerglings showing up in the natural. XY does react very quickly. Obviously for someone like XY, these are fun series. Like, you have very little to lose and you have everything to win. The Chinese fans were very hyped to see uh, one of their fan favorites, one of their veterans duking it out with. In the eyes of many, the GOAT. I'll say in the eyes of many to not trigger some of the diehard Maru or rogue fanboys out there. But 
Saro does not seem uh, very impressed so far by anything that's happened in this game. If anything, Yona looks kind of bored. He's just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we have Juanito. A gym rat. Juanito thinks that the more you go to the gym, the more appealing you become to the ladies. How's that working out, Juanito? How is that working out? <laughs> Spam this Yagi to help the goat. That doesn't make any sense. Let's do the dudes instead. <laughs> no idea what Roddy is talking about, but I'm happy it makes him happy to talk about it. Spinacle says, any grew on me, but I miss Goldberg. You know, my one issue, as we just keep it close eye, but this is TVZ and it's triple CC, guys. We're making Hellions. We probably go Banshee. Small chance he goes for a Raven here, but it is going to be a Banshee first. I have the feeling that for John Anik, the absolute passion for MMA isn't there. And he has done interviews in the past where he always said that he dreams on commentating in a Super Bowl or he dreams on commentating a college league uh, American football final. I don't know what the exact name, Rose Bowl or something. It feels like uh, he's more passionate about American football than he is about MMA. And because he has said that, I hear it. <laughs> and that's the one thing that I don't really like. Because I feel like if you're commentating the most prestigious league in the world over a respected sport, that should be your passion. I feel like you should not be more passionate about something else. You can be passionate about other things, but that shouldn't be your number one passion. Yeah, that's true, uh, Von Orange Ball. Could be, I don't know. I don't follow college sports too closely. I, I don't think that commentating got worse in MMA. Uh, maybe it got better in the end when they removed Goldberg and Joe Rogan, but I feel Goldberg and Joe together, they were very good for the ultimate hype fights, you know? Maybe like some of the earlier fights where analysis is used for and we want to learn something. They were obviously not the best duo. But I do think they were the best for the ultimate hype fights as XY is very sloppy with his first Banshee. Alrighty then, guys. I know that he didn't go double Banshee, he didn't go cloak Banshee, but donating one Banshee like that in the center of the map for absolutely nothing. That's not the play, my friends. XY will know that. If you want to cause an upset here, obviously you're going to have to have a very clean early game. Since he's not going double Banshee and he's not going Cloak, maybe it's not as impactful as it otherwise would have been, but how can you possibly feel good about losing a Banshee like that on the edge of creep while getting zero kills? Did you live in America? Yes, I lived in America for give or take six years. They rang my door today because they wanted to convince me uh, that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, so they wanted to have a little chitty chat about it. Uh, but I wasn't wearing a shirt because I was sitting outside getting some sunshine. So I just opened the door and I said like, oh, sorry. But apparently I said sorry in a more English manner than it's the Dutch manner. So they started talking about Jesus Christ to me in English. And I was like, ik ben Nederlands hoor. And they're like, oh, okay, but you were talking English. So I was like, I don't think I was. <laughs> like, I said sorry. They're like, yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> they're like, anyway, are you? I was like, no, sorry, not today. But I wish you all the best and have a lovely day. <laughs> Since I have my man Lino in the chat. Yesterday I was wearing your shirt, Lino. Today we are wrapping it. I actually had a meeting yesterday with uh, the bosses of Basilisk and I was wearing the Hoopsis uh, shirt. And they were like, hey, is that Lino's company? I was like, yeah. Uh, and uh, they were like, oh, that's awesome. I was like, yeah. He's our boy who got bopped on the Friday night and they started laughing. They're like, yeah, we saw that. <laughs> Why did the rocks take so much damage, by the way, when they collapsed, guys? What did I miss? I was a bit confused by that. Was there something underneath the rocks? XY's macro, by the way, has not been that bad. Other than the Banshee uh, being donated for absolutely no good reason. This has not been a sloppy game. It's not been a bad game. It's been a very defensive game. Very macro-oriented. I guess XY... Okay, well, just when I said that, he's going to go for a forward stim. Grabs a queen. That is something. Sero feels that he can surround his army and he's going to grab a decent amount of marines. Off creep, even. 
few of the Banelings got picked off, but plenty of Banelings remain. If XY gets his hands on this center base though with Planetary Fortress, that's always rather difficult for Zerks to break. And we could potentially be in for a very long one here on Neo Humanity. Even though there is obviously a significant skill difference between these two players. I don't know what XY's player record is in the regular season, but I know it's not as good as Seros. <laughs> Does the right rock fall on top of the left rock? No, that's not a thing. That is definitely not a thing. XY kept shooting on the rocks after they dropped. Thank you. That explains it. I was talking about Lino's company. When are you arriving in the Netherlands, by the way, Lino? I know you're coming soon, right? I'm ready, mate. Lino doesn't know this yet, guys, but he's visiting me soon. But what he doesn't know is that a new set of Pokemon cards is about to come out. And he's going to see me open way too many packs. <laughs> this one scan goes down, one of the active group tumors got picked off, unfortunately for x -Y. he cannot get in range of the other active creep tumors. Zero with six dropaloids by the way on the production tab, so that's cool. We might get a proper Zerg invasion. Have you guys also noticed that over the last few months, the dropaloids really became a lot more used? I feel like in almost every matchup, I see it a bit more in ZVZ. Lol. <laughs> that's awesome. I... <laughs> Don't know what's the point, but that... Oh my god, okay. Maybe it's not awesome. Sarah's smiling about it. He's like, what the hell was that? <laughs> what the hell is even that? All right, overload speed is kicking in. And we are looking at 6 times 8, which is 46, right? 16, 32. Oh my god, why can't I not do math? Yeah, 48. 48 Zerglings potentially flying into the main base. Did I set 46? I meant 48, guys. 48. I'm a donkey, okay. We have Banelings connecting with a few of the Marines. It's definitely not 55. I was like 46, 48. And I know that 5 times 8 is 40. So 6 times 8, obviously 48. Parasitic Bomb landed on the Metavax, taking a lot of damage. XY is about to take a beating in his main base, guys. Because 48 Zerglings have shown up. All 48 will get unloaded into the main. This is a fun style for Serral to play. It's always... I've, when I look at games like this, I always feel like this is what StarCraft 2 was supposed to be. The Zerg is supposed to be swarmy. They're not supposed to turtle to brute lords and infestors and more spellcasters, no. We send an insane amount of links to the other side of the map. In the natural, in the third, in the fourth, in the main. Obviously very successful attack for Sarah. Who's just cruising in this game, guys? He's maxed out. He's got 1800 minerals in the bank. XY wanted to play a macro game. He said, all right, I'll let you do what you want to do as long as I can do what I want to do. Uh, unfortunately for XY, that didn't really turn out all that nice. He did not expect the drop lords to show up in the main. We have a few Vipers in the mix now as well. Could go for Blinding Clouds, could go for Abdox. Love that Blinding Cloud there, by the way, and the three tanks behind the mineral patches. The tank positioning is kind of cool. So XY took out these weird sort of blockers behind the mineral line so he could move the tanks a little bit closer towards that planetary and potentially keep it alive a whole lot longer. But Sarah just says thank you very much. Single blinding cloud apparently now disables three tanks. <laughs> it didn't quite work out for XY. Seems like it's a rather one-sided affair here on Neo Humanity, the opening match of this clan war. As I said before, Basilisk undefeated 6-0 in the regular season. Invictus Gaming, without a win, 0-6. and six. Saro is still completely undefeated in WTL Code A and Code S as well. He's got a pretty insane record at this point. We are going for 32 Zerglings this time around and an Ultra, guys. 32 Zerglings and an Ultra get dropped into the natural. Plus 2 melee, obviously done. Adreno Glands is done. And XY is just getting bopped here. He's getting ran over. Sarah is doing his best Paul Bosfeld impression. He's here. He's there. He's literally everywhere. And a couple of SCVs go down. And with a couple, I mean 24. A few of these well-protected tanks are going down too. There are two Zerklings or three Zerklings still nibbling away at that final tank. For a split moment there, we had 112 or 114 Zerklings in production. It is safe to say that Sarah has been hitting his injects. He's got larva for days. He's maxed out once more. And if I was the coach of XY, I would throw in the, the towel at this point. Be like, all right, that's enough. Stop it. Hmm? Yeah, that's what I just said. And uh, good morning to you. 
Uh, Rainer has also been implementing the Drop Lords a little bit more, right? We've seen it in some of the ZVPs, where sometimes Rainer was in a bit of a pickle, and it's either 8 or 16 Zerglings that brought him back into it. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, the game has been out for 13 years. Drop Lords have not been touched or changed or patched in quite some time. Uh, but suddenly we see it a whole lot more lately, and I think it makes sense. Like, you have Overlords for days in these macro games, and... Yeah, the Terran players, they often really focus on where ground units can break through. But they are not necessarily ready for 5, 6, 7 drop lords at once to show up. And there are some moments where just 8 Zerglings in the main base can turn a game upside down. I believe these are the final moments of our first game on Neo Humanity. I have to admit, it was not much of a fight. XY knows it. GG gets called. Serol stays perfect as the handsome man he is. And 8 and no in WTO code A was 13 and 0 I believe was it 12? No, what was it? Yeah, he was 13 and 0 in WTO code S. So Cero is now 22 and 0 representing Basilisk in Team Leagues. Pretty reasonable performance, guys. It's crazy, but it, it kind of feels that, that we did a good job signing him. He's 22 and 0 for us in Team Leagues. That's all right. <laughs> I don't know about it. I don't know about you, but Jonah's feeling 22. <laughs> Will we ever lose? That's the real question. <laughs> Where did you guys find this player? I went to the local supermarket and I picked up some chatter about a guy from Finland, kind of good at StarCraft. So, told the guys from Bastilis, take a look at him. We found his email on a uh, random forum, a bit of an inactive forum. Send him a mail. We offered him a mouse and a keyboard and a headset, and he said, I'm in. The greatest pickup of all time. Yeah. There is a chance that he might get 100 if he goes undefeated for the entire season of WTO Code S. And he goes perfect in the playoffs too. Now, obviously, we can uh, expect that. Not even from Cero can we expect that, but... So far, he has literally been perfect. Uh, Royal Blood is going to be the second battleground for these two. XY, a fan favorite and a bit of a legend in the Chinese scene. Duking it out with Cero here. What is this uh, XY 100% mentality? So the TLDR of that is that it's a meme in the Chinese scene. They are bullying him a little bit because they said that XY, he's been playing for all these years. He never wins anything, but still the motivation is sky high and he keeps on trying. And the fact that someone, after defeat, after defeat, after defeat, after defeat, still does his best in StarCraft 2, deserves a 10 in mentality. That is the meme. Shut up, Rainer. <laughs> Alright, guys. Game 2. In the bottom left side of Royal Blood, we are looking at the main base of the man that was representing Basilisk. And still is, of course. He's vibing, apparently. Maybe he found that Rainer playlist. And unlike Rainer, he might actually win while listening to it. That's Serral. And in the top right side, we've got our Chinese legend with the 10 in mentality, Invictus Gaming XY. Do players get a monthly paycheck? Uh, Cero and Trigger obviously do get paid. Uh, Raynor gets to hang out with Roddy once a month. Uh, obviously, I get rewarded for that, so I get a paycheck too, but yeah. Reyna's reward of being on Basilisk is that he gets to spend some time with the legend that is Roddy. He plays some Padel. I pretend to be his friend. That is Reyna's reward. And he doesn't even need to use channel points for it. Reyna got the best deal. <laughs> thank you to my man Porty for the 69 months. And thank you to the most evil Lama for the 22 months. Well, I don't know about you. Yona's feeling 22 and apparently you are as well. Brody, we need a gym in Zeitlon like the kid at this place. My gym is nice. I'm still a member of the gym. I haven't gone in a while, but... This week, I actually... Uh, I was very active. I'm proud of myself. I also haven't had an alcoholic beverage for seven days at this point, guys. The last drink I had was uh, last Friday. Maybe I didn't even have a drink on Friday. Maybe it was like Thursday last week. So over a week. I'm becoming healthy, boys. Mm hmm Cuckoo messaged me and I saw his post and your comments underneath. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
the cuckoo's instagram is uh my little playground to misbehave <laughs> once more we've got two zerglings sneaking into the natural of xy but xy is not being sloppy here in the early game he does save his scv obviously Saro is not giving anything away on his side of the map against a single reaper and it seems like xy just wants to make the best of this opportunity to play a best of two against Saro. And we'll once more go for a triple CC build and we'll take it from there. <laughs> I'm glad I gave you a chuckle. <laughs> and he's obligated to stop to me? No, Rainer is not obligated to do anything. Hmm. Uh, that really depends on the weather, obviously, Lino, and that depends on if I have work and on my brother, but there is a good chance, mate. You should just hit up my brother about that. I am not in charge. I do not have the keys. But I'm sure if the weather is nice, we can make that happen. And then Reino should definitely come as well. But no excuses, Reino. Couple of hours, you're not going to miss out on some valuable practice. You can just watch Gabe's stream and see who he plays on the Saturday afternoon. Barcode Protos into Barcode Protos into Barcode Protos. <laughs> yeah, Nikita has played pa Padel quite a few times with us, yeah. I think he likes it. I feel like he had fun at least. Once more, it's going to be a Banshee first coming out of the starport for XY. Obviously, last game. I don't think that XY played bad. He just played a very passive style. This cloak feels very fake to me, by the way. Uh, but maybe it feels so fake that it's like the double mind game and it's real, but no, that's not the case. Okay, he's even going to cancel the Banshee. So Sarah scouts with the Overlord, sees a tech lab connected to the starport, sees XY startup Cloak. The moment that the Overlord dies, Cloak gets cancelled and XY is like, you know what? Last game that Banshee did absolutely nothing for me, so I'm not even going to build it this time around. Besides that, his setup is very similar to what we saw in the previous game. We've got a lair on the way. I'm actually very excited to introduce uh, Lambo to Padel. Lambo will be coming by this summer as well. And I actually think that Lambo would really like it too. I think he's going to have a ton of fun. I'll make sure to uh, give you guys some content out of that. We'll record some footage. I look forward to it. Maybe we can do Nikita and myself against Rainer and Lambo. Team Protoss against Team Zerg. That's going to be a banger of a match. Having uh, Nikita on your team is a small handicap, but I believe that I'm good enough right now to overcome that handicap. <laughs> on Homestar Cup? No. I don't know if they have it in Krefeld. If they have a Padel court around Krefeld, I'm definitely willing to play some in Germany too, but I would need to ask permission to take a Naruto to leave the venue. Is Luf coming with him? Yeah, of course. What do you think, man? You think I just want to hang out with Lambo? I invite Lambo so I can hang out with Louv. Louv is the real star there. Who cares about the Lambo nerd? <laughs> Couple of circlings of Saro running into the third base of XY, grabbing two SCVs. La uh, Saro is switching it up, by the way. We're not going into the Ling Bane Ultra style of the previous game. We have double evolution chamber. Roach Warren is wiggling. Roach Speed is on the way. And Saro's making a lot of roaches of 68 drones. I don't know if XY is aware of this. I feel like he hasn't scouted in a while. Mm, he's kind of poking with the Hellions, roaming the map. He's doing a good job in the 9 creep on the left side. If we want to look at the right side of life. Picks up 60 Marines right now. It's very important that he doesn't lose these Marines though. Because if he loses these Marines, then Sarah can just immediately counterattack. And then the tanks are going to be too exposed and the Roaches will just straight up win the game. Because Sarah is building a buttload of Roaches. Like, it's of 68, 69 drones, and I feel like Saro is already looking at 20 plus roaches. XY does snipe a Overlord on the left side of the map, that's nice and all. This 1-1 one, one roach timing is going to hit like a Volvo truck. And I hope that none of you guys have ever been hit by a Volvo truck, but I can guarantee you guys that that really hurts. They hit different, man. They're built different over there in Sweden. As the roach is already finding a few of these marines. XY should really take this very serious right now. One of the tanks is going to get picked up. No! Zero missed Corrosive Ball. He dropped it on the high ground there on the pillar. It's good to see that Jonah is a human. Does still get the tank in the end. 
but he didn't quite get it as quickly as he could have. Mm. Thank you to Carpasis and Joda Cakes for the six months and seven months. Let's go, champs. 2 2 upgrades on the way for the Terran. Saro not starting up 2 2 yet, guys, so he's about to show up with 112 army supply of good old Roach Ravager. I would say Loco take notes, because these are the kind of builds that Loco has been doing for the last 12 years. But then whenever you call Loco an online home story cup, he gets very sensitive about it. And I'm like, oh, Loco, you haven't made hives since 2013, mate. We all know that that's the case. XY has an alrighty army, though, guys. There is a world where XY actually kind of defends here. He's getting a lot of free shots up with these tanks. Sarah's gonna send it. It's 1-1 one, one bio. Roach Ravager, a couple of tanks in the back. XY is doing alright, no? Am I crazy? Am I on Chinese Copium, or is XY doing all right here? I kind of feel like he is. That was not bad at all, man. Those tanks were able to get multiple big shots off. Now, the good news for Saro is... Yeah, look at that. He lost 15 roaches there, and he actually didn't even get any of the key units. The good news for Saro is that he is an absolute master in threading that fine line between being committed and still finding a way to transition out of all of it. There is an armory there, part of the wall of. Losing an armory would obviously be a bit painful for all these tanks. And it does seem that this armory is going to go down. Roaches and Ravages, one final volley. That's going to deny plus one on these tanks. Saro has started up the hive. He's dropped the Hydra then as well. We have a few infestors in production. So potentially a big fungal. Maybe we get the combination of fungal and um, corrosive bombs. I want to say parasitic bomb, but that's just what my heart wants. There's nothing that I love more than a fungal or metavax and parasitic bomb at the same time. Saro uh, is in a tiny bit of trouble though here, guys. There is definitely going to be a moment where the Terran army is a whole lot better than Saro's army. We've got an exciting game here. This is obviously what we hope for. The 2-2 two -two upgrades are about to finish up. Serral does find a nice way to buy some extra time for himself with these lings and roaches maneuvering around the map and backstabbing the third. This is obviously good damage, but that doesn't make the terrifying Terran army disappear. I have to admit, I don't know if I really wanted to say uh, XY donate all these SCVs. It feels that XY is ultra concerned about Serral jumping on his army in the center of the map, so he wasn't really paying attention. Our Chinese Terran, who played a very solid game so far, is now taking a little too much damage from these roaches, if you ask me. But he does still have a good old terrifying Terran army on the other side of the map. Some Hellbats in the mix as well, they can soak up a few of these shots. Sarah is transitioning into Lurkers, into Seismic Spines. And he still needs to clean this up. In a weird way, this is one of the closest games I've seen of Sarah so far in the WTL. Fortunately for Yona, the 2-2 upgrades are done, so he doesn't have to worry about losing these evil chambers. And he is finding more and more and more damage. And every second that goes by, guys, is gonna make things easier and easier for Serral. Because he's got Lurkers on the way, he's got Seismic Spines. And XY is just ultra committed to his 2-2 tank push. And he's uh, believing in the slow and steady wins the race, but it's a little too slow and steady. There's now just a few roaches and a couple of zerglings are able to clean up all three tanks here. Marauder, even tank number four is going to be in a bit of trouble. Sarah is spending every single penny that he has, but he has now successfully made it up to, I think, ten lurkers almost. So ten lurkers with the seismic spines, yeah. Unfortunately for XY, I think he took too much time here, man. Took a lot of damage from that counterattack. Wasn't quite sure how serious to take it. He's now going to pull the Muslim. And that is stimming forward with a whole bunch of marines into a lot of lurkers. I don't know if XY is also living together with an Alice, but if he was, his Alice is gonna hear a thing or two about it. Look at it, Alice. Like, look at look at the lurkers. I just, I don't know what to do. Every time I stim forward. And that is why our good friend Benjamin Baker plays Age of Empires right now. In the end, it seems like we're not even getting our potentially exciting game ending fight. As all the tanks got picked off by the Ravagers one by one. All the reinforcing tanks struggled in securing the third base of XY. Now all that he's got left is a couple of marines. They are about to have plus three. That is very impactful against roaches and ravages and queens, but it doesn't really matter against lurkers. Fuel Liberty showing up is cute, but Sarah wouldn't be Sarah if he didn't have a couple of ravages left over. 
And these Carosa balls will take out the first lip. They should take out that second lip and they will do it now. And the XY supply guys is looking very sad. There was a moment where this game looked a little exciting, but Zero maneuvered himself out of a potentially scary situation with ease in the end. And he gets a convincing 2-0 lead on the board. That means Basilisk 2, uh, Invictus Gaming 0, and that means that Zero has now increased his record to 23-0 and zero for us in Team Leaks. Not bad. Michael Jordan approved. That small roach attack won the game, really. Yeah, the, the attack in the third base definitely did it. Uh, Serol 2 0. Oh. Next up, is it Rainer versus Tutming? That is what I remember, but I could be wrong. Let's take a double look. No, Breaking GG, sorry. Oh, Rainer and Chinese Zergs, guys. It's been dicey in the past. I'd go for a draw here. <laughs> <laughs> I would go for a draw, but that's just my suggestion. You guys vote for whatever you want to vote, but I would go for a draw. <laughs> no, no, I think Rainer has it. I'm obviously just memeing. We are expecting a 2-0 here. Rainer did have a, a busy week. Uh, if you guys follow Rainer on social media or you're in his Discord, you guys have probably seen a couple of awesome pictures. It seems that Red Bull invited him over to the headquarters or the headquarters of the athletes at least he saw a bunch of very beautiful f1 cars and i think he overall had a great time he came back yesterday night so been a busy and exhausting week for him but sometimes that actually really helps to just get away from home for a couple days and surround yourself with nice people see something cool you come back with a lot of uh, good energy a fresh mindset and we can't ignore the fact that Reyna has now won two games in a row in WTL code S2-0, guys. The man is on a streak. The 50-50 man is no more. He is a 2-0 nerd at this point. Basilisk has a good roster. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. I have to admit, though, guys, that playoff weekend... At this point, I think it's safe to say that we can already start talking about playoffs. We obviously don't know where we start in the playoffs, but that is going to be a nerve-wracking weekend, man. That's going to be probably, for me personally, the most exciting day of StarCraft this year. Besides Katowice, but that's already behind me. When it comes to all the upcoming events, the playoff weekend is going to be a very, very exciting one. I believe it's late July, guys. Like 28, 29, 30 July. That is playoff weekend. We saw breaking GG. This is a Rainer. He gets a 10 for offense and he's back in the 80s, baby. A Rainer with an 82. They've been impressed. They're giving him love. Look at that. He's back. Onside wins this tournament. I want to bet. I have a different bet, Tingle Tango. And that is that you are banned by slowly falling before we even make it to the playoff weekend. That's the bet I want to make. And I'm voting for, yes, you're banned. <laughs> Is the play of a land to any? No. Playoffs are online, as far as I know. Unless something drastically changes, but... 82 is still too low. Rainer doesn't care, guys. You know what they say, a lion does not care. But the sheep think about him. And Rainer is the lion. And the guys who make these rankings, they are the sheep. Can we take... All point away from Tingo Tango. Put money where the mouth is. It's funny, by the way, because I have a leather account called 82. But then Reyna got nerfed to 78. And even a bit less, I believe. But now he's back at 82, so I can leather on my 82 account again. There are some incriminating video evidence for him, Karen. He did that for the fans, guys. Reyna is a showman. There are some people who sometimes get a bit confused about the person that Rainer is. And we've seen people in the past saying like, Oh, I don't like Rainer. He's arrogant. He's cocky. Rainer is rude. Rainer is a very sweet kid that just wants to make things fun. Likes to banter. And obviously banter is not for everyone, right? There are some people who feel like there is no room for jokes in this world. 
if jokes can only ever be slightly offensive. But Rainer is a fun kid who uh, likes to give people a laugh, likes to give people something to talk about. Rainer was legitimately 90 plus last year. I don't, I don't know what happened. Well, what happened is that Rainer was not necessarily the star player that Kaizi Gaming had in mind. Uh, Rainer didn't, didn't do all that great in the regular season. Rainer wasn't the all-star in the playoffs that they hoped for. Um, at I am Katowice, I think a lot of people just focus on Rainer's final result, right? And the final result is that Rainer was a top eight player. And of course, there is more to that story, right? Rainer lost to the guy who won it all. Rainer went perfect in the group stage. But if you ignore all of that and you just see where he finished, you're like, top eight, okay, that, that's not that great. And then you look at the Dream Act Masters Europe Regionals. Where did Rainer finish? Top eight again. Uh, I think those things, all those factors combined is the reason why Rainer is ranked a little bit lower right now than he was in the past. But the year is long, the season is long. And I have a lot of faith in our Italian stallion, and I'm sure he's going to bump those numbers up. To be fair, Sarah was also a top eight player in Katowice. That is correct. But after Katowice, Sarah has probably played like 50 games or 50 series, and he won like 48 of them. While if Rainer played 50 series, let's say he went 37 to 13 or 38 to 12 or something, right? So that definitely is a big difference in performance after Katowice between these two. Anyway, let's get it on. Let's get it on. Round one, fight. In the top right side, we are looking at the main base of our always charming, entertaining, and bantery Italian Zerg, Reiner. In the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of the man who's got a microphone in front of his face. It's hard to play like that. I speak from a place with a lot of experience. It is a breaking GG. Obviously, the story for this best of two is simple. If Reiner wins 2-0, we won another clan war. If it goes 1-1, it will come down to the final series. All of these clan wars in the WTL regular season are a best of seven. So the first team to win four maps uh, has won the series. And if you guys join in later, Basilisk is 6-0 in the regular season. Invictus Gaming is 0-6. Apparently Breaking GG is playing under the account called Lemon. And I don't know why, but I think that's fascinating. Rainer going to be stream sniping? Absolutely, mate. Uh, we all know that uh, Rainer, a guy who's literally a world champion and has won countless of LAN events in the past will probably stream snipe while we have a 2-3 to three minute delay uh, in a best of 2 against breaking GG. That seems like a comment that makes a lot of sense. You know what mate? I think you're onto something. If Rainer 2 zeros, then there is no third series. There will be a third series because the players also play for individual WTL points which will allow them to qualify for a big 1v1 tournament later this year. And also, map scores matter in case of a tie at the end of the season. So, if Reina 2 zeros, we will still play. Oh, okay. Breaking GG is going to be cheeky here, by the way, guys. Very cheeky, even. I, I did a lot of formalities there, but we should start talking about this game. Because he's even grabbing a couple of drones. So, what Breaking GG did there, guys, is that he grabbed drones from the main base to the natural. Not because he's oversaturated, but he, because he wants to sell the idea to Rainer. It's like, oh, look, I'm just droning, man. There is no big deal. And so far, Rainer does not make it into the main base. He only sees these drones in the natural. Breaking GG here, guys, with 200 IQ big brain plays. This can be a scary one. This could honestly be a scary one. Because so far, I think this plan is working out to a T. Rainer has a little bit of vision with that overlord. He is still completely in the dark. Oh, Reyna doesn't know, Reyna doesn't know, Reyna doesn't know. Does Rob a Bailing Nest? No, he still doesn't know. Okay, now he knows. I think at this point he knows. He's on 26 drones though, sweet baby Jesus. He's going to have a hard time walling off there. Link speed is done. Here come the links of breaking GG. And Reyna's going to have to micro like an Italian god. Oh, Evo Chamber block is too late. It's drones and queens against a lot of links. A little bit of drone drilling. This can backfire obviously with high ping. Five drones have gone down. Eight drones have gone down. Rainer already shaking his head. He is not happy. Please end this prediction immediately. I think this is over, guys. Rainer got cheesed. Rainer got all in. I gotta give kudos to, to Breaking GG for how he sold this. How he sent a couple of units to the low ground. Uh, this is a perfect cheese. 
This really is the perfect all-in. It is the perfect cheese. Rainer still is going to try to make something out of this game. And he does have a Baneling Nest. There are a few more links coming in. But Rainer does have one extra queen. Link speed is done now for Rainer as well. Not 100% over yet. Not a 100% over yet. Like 16 drones is an insane amount of drones. But obviously Breaking G was ultra committed. Rainer is definitely not totally dead yet. It looked like he was kind of dead after he lost all the queens. He was shaking his head. He was leaning back a little bit in his chair. But the Italian Stallion is fighting. I felt that Breaking G did a lot of things perfect there. It just really goes to show how damn committed this game is. Or how this build is. 16 drones and 3 queens. And there is still everything to play for. I don't, I don't know if Raynor is way behind. I do think he is behind because of the amount of queens that he lost. And he obviously lost some mining time. But Breaking GG was not mining any gas during all of that. Maybe Raynor can actually start being aggressive. Because he's the one with the bailing nest, right? Raynor is the one with the bailing nest. He's the one with Banes. I think right now the most scary thing for Raynor is... If he moves out, he's so vulnerable at home. And if he moves out with only a couple of units, he won't be able to get a lot done. Breaking GG is going up to three bases. But hey, this is at least already a very fun game. That's obviously always what we hope for here. So Rainer is behind. He's in a bit of a pickle. But he's not down and out. Rainer sometimes does do his best work from almost impossible positions. I don't know where he's going to take this. Okay, one of the banelings detonated. Don't know what that was all about. Roach Warren for Raynor. I don't think he has a lair yet, right? We do have one happy Zergling of Raynor scouting. Poor Raynor, by the way. He always goes up against like the silliest builds. But I really want to give a lot of kudos to Breck and GG. It all came down to those first drones that he grabbed from the main that he sent into the natural. And Raynor walks in there with two links and he sees the two drones there. As Breaking GG gets another favorable trade there. A single Zergling for a Baneling. We have a lot of links right now. Breaking GG running towards the third base. If Breaking GG can get a cancel here, he is going to be absolutely cooking. But Arena is going to do his best to make sure that that doesn't happen. Drone-wise, it's still awfully close. We do have that lair on the way for our Chinese Zerg. I do love it when a plan comes together, and I think Breaking GG played that very well. He sold it very well. StarCraft 2 is a game of incomplete com information, but the little information that players can get their hands on is often what they base their next decisions off. So yeah, sometimes you want to sell something that isn't there, and I, I think he did a great job in that regard. Two bailings for two bailings there, as Raynor now for the first time in this game is going to try to be the aggressor. Should find a couple of drones. There's one more bailing there, detonated in the middle of nowhere. A great little poke here for Raynor. Grabs the queen, grabs four drones. Yeah, not bad. I mean, 20 zerglings for all that. Raynor's going to be happy with that. The lair is a lot quicker on the side of our Chinese Zerg. It's super annoying, by the way, that Breaking GG is on the top side of the scoreboard while we are watching a ZVZ, but he spawned at the bottom side of the map. This is so freaking frustrating. But he will have quicker Roach Beat. He should have... Well, no, plus one missile attacks is pretty much dead even, as we can see on the right side of our screen. Rainer is definitely a bit concerned as he drops a Spine Crawler. Overlord speed as well. Cancels it. Doesn't want to go overlord speed. Goes for carapace instead. Yeah, this is... Even though we had completely different routes to getting where we are. Eight minutes in. Pretty damn even game. So we've got the Niders going down. Alright. So it started off with a link flood. And breaking GG is going to try to close this one out. With nothing but roaches. Plus one missile attacks. And a Niders. Rainer has no vision of the corner of his main guys. That could become hard. But if Rainer builds nothing but roaches from here on out, it, it doesn't look bad for Rainer. 
Seems that Rainer was a bit indecisive about his upgrades. He cancelled Carapace and now went for plus two missile attacks. But none of that is that important. What is important here is that Rainer doesn't take a bad fight against the initial Nidus. And that Rainer knows that he's about to be attacked. Normally when the army numbers are this quick, guys, or this close, I obviously favor the defender. Rainer normally is very good in crazy scenarios like this. We're about to find out. Rainer is about to get the heads up that there is a Nidus. And at this point he knows. But a lot of the roaches of breaking GG are kind of in the middle of nowhere. I mean, Rainer really has to weather the storm here as a couple of roaches are picking up the queen. There are a lot of units left over here for Rainer. He moved that spine crawler as well. I think with that spine here, if, Ro if Rainer pulls the roaches a tiny bit back, he should be fine. Numbers are still awfully similar and that should always favor the defender. And we can't ignore the fact that Rainer is working on plus two missile attacks. <laughs> Rainer shuts down that Nidus as well. Honestly, uh, a fun game here between these two. But at this point, it looks very, very good for Rainer. Breaking GG was very eager to close this one out. And yeah, he couldn't quite get it done. I feel like there should have been a world where our Chinese Zerg was a bit further ahead than what he was. Now, this is a bit of a reckless fight here by Raynor. He doesn't quite have plus two missile attacks yet, so that was a little bit silly. I want to say the first mistake that we've seen Raynor make in five or six minutes. There was no need for him to walk into that concave right before his plus two missile attacks finished up. Especially now because Breaking GG is still just committed. Hasn't built a drone in forever. A couple of Ravages in the mix obviously is very nice in these Roach fights. They have more range. They have the ability to drop the Corrosive Ball. Yeah, Rainer is a four base Zerg. Breaking GG is a three base Zerg. Chinese Zerg did fire up plus two missile attacks as well, but that's going to take a long time. So now he has to fight up a ramp with an upgrade deficit. Good luck, have fun with that one. Going to try to get another Nidus up in the back of the main, but I, uh, I don't really believe in this attack anymore, guys. This game was exciting. It really looked for a split second that breaking GG had Raynor. But you can now see it on his camera as well. The hope is fading. He's like, oh, I thought I had this. Rain obviously does still need to be a little bit careful. You don't want to fight with only 20-30% of your army. As a few units were left behind in the main, in the natural, and a couple of the army units were trailing on the right side. But he's going to be okay. Now breaking GG is the one who's building a spine crawler. But I'm afraid that that's going to be late. Rainer wants to get some overlords, gets the double kill, and I'm sure that he wants to get the hat trick. There's one more corrosive ball. Should take out that final overlord. Look, got personal between Rainer and that overlord. I know he wants it. We are battling, but the numbers at this point heavily favor Rainer, who's got an upgrade advantage as well. And if you have an upgrade advantage in these Roach battles, you will be fine. Rainer takes the 1 0 lead. Sends Basilisk to 3 and 0. Oh. <laughs> He's happy. He was sweating a little, guys. We saw him tilt his head. We saw him roll back in that chair a little bit, but. That's the spirit android. Never give up. Great performance by Rainer. He kind of got fooled. Breaking GG had him right where he wanted. But Rainer still managed to uh, find a way out of that very problematic situation in the early game. Is this live or just a minute replay? It is live. Uh, basically every single game of Basilisk throughout this entire season has been live. Other than the clan bar we had against Berserker Esports, which was on the same weekend as the finals of the ESL Masters. That's the one time where uh, I said like, okay, uh, we don't want to play on that day. So we played all the games in advance. But every other play day so far in WTL Code A or Code S has been live. These matches are live too. It is a little bit of a delay to prevent cheating, even though our guys would obviously never cheat. But these are the rules of WTL. But basically, you guys can always assume that the games are live unless I tell you guys over and over and over and over and over again that the games are not live. But I don't really enjoy casting games that are not live, so... Basically, whenever you see me sit here, just assume that games are live. Hmm. I think there is a moment, Hanom, where if all those queens die and the first eight drones die, that some people will leave a ladder game, yeah, where they're like, okay, I can't be bothered, this is annoying. Yeah, it's good to see that Rainer is hard, is in the right place, that he's a warrior. And that he didn't want to tap out too easily. 
replays just don't feel the same. Yeah, I'm the same. Uh, obviously, a lot of people do not mind at all. They don't care. Now, I don't really mind casting a replay if if it's very recent, right? If it's within 24 or 48 hours and absolutely nobody knows the result, then I don't mind it that much. But if it's older than two days, then it already kind of loses its charm for me. It's the same with like watching football. Like if it's not live, I don't find it all that fun. Life is exciting, not life is you know, whatever. I think I am, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like Breaking G should have doubled down, should have never tried to transition. Maybe even pull a single drone to randomly build a spine somewhere. Like, I don't know. Just like, if we're all in, we gotta play it with a lot of heart and commitment. Will PH versus Abydos be next? Yes, but we still have Trigger against Maxet. And uh, obviously, after every clan war in the regular season for Basilisk, I do an interview with the boys, so... There is a small chance that I will miss a little bit of Platinum Heroes against Abydos of the very first game. Because as soon as this is done, we're going to do an interview with Serol, Raynor and Trigger. And just hear their thoughts quickly. Go, go, Bastionist 6 -0 for the first time. Did we not have a single 6 -0 so far? I know that we had one in uh, Code A, but... Uh, no, we had 6-0 against Berserker Esports. We had a. I know that this is the week that I wasn't really commentating because I had to cast ESL Masters, but we've had a 6-0. Yeah, we had one. Let's go ahead and hop into round two. Round two, fight. Bottom right side, our Chinese Zerk came very close to taking a surprising 1-0 lead. Unfortunately for him, he's down 0-1. That is breaking GG. Representing Invictus Gaming in the top left side, our Italian Stallion. He was strolling a little bit earlier in the chat. I think he's in a very happy spirit at the moment. He's in a good mood, and Raynor in a good mood is terrifying for everyone. Obviously, it's Basilisk Raynor. Rocking that Red Bull cap. So I'm just going to assume that he had a lot of fun at the Red Bull headquarters this week. Basilisk hoodie and the Red Bull cap. Sell out! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> just joking, guys. Two absolutely awesome brands to represent, if you ask me. I've been harassing Rainer that he needs to get me a Red Bull delivery, man. I'm trying to... Uh, last time I visited him, I did see that he had a whole bunch. I've got zero. And then he said I could take a couple cans home, but didn't happen. Let me make sure that I keep harassing him. Who is better, Raynor or Serol? I think over the last few months, Serol's had the better results. But I think when they play against one another, it will always be close. It will always be competitive. I think in all three matchups together, I think at the moment, Serol is a little bit more well-rounded. Because Raynor is a player that has crazy high spikes, right? That there are, there are moments where he clearly just is the best Stark 2 player in the world. But his overall level is maybe a little bit lower than Serol. But it can definitely peak higher. That's the way that I've always seen those two. Yeah. And that's why I think Serro against Raynor is always a treat. Because you just don't know who's going to win between those two. I think overall at the moment across the board, Serro is a little bit more solid. But never count Raynor out. And do not think that just because... Oh, maybe Serro is a bit better right now. Raynor cannot win Dream Masters Yon Chopping. No, he absolutely can. Rainer is a guy that can really step up to the level of competition as well. And playing against the likes of Maru and Sero can bring out the very best thing in Rainer. Rainer is going. <laughs> I like that. I haven't really thought of a lot of uh, Dragon Ball Z references, but yeah, I can see that. <laughs> oh, hey fever season, guys. I uh, recently went through a couple of my very old Dragon Ball Z cards, but I, I never knew anything about DBZ cards. I just kind of bought a few packs. I collected them. I have a, a couple of Dragon Ball Z cards that I think look cool, but I have no idea if they were actually special or rare or not. But I did put them in sleeves and in a folder. They're kind of cool. Anyway, that is Dragon Ball Z. Not very uh, relevant to this DBZ as Breaking GG had a very quick lair. We know that he's a big fan of Roaches and Nidus Networks. 
He's actually a fan of Nidus in all three matchups, by the way. It seems that these two are kind of mirroring one another. Breaking GG is the first one to fire up a couple of roaches, but Reyna's roach wine finishes up and he's doing the exact same thing, so. Not the most standard ZVZ openings here, but they are still kind of doing the exact same thing. Except for the fact that Breaking GG is going to drop another Nidus network. <laughs> I feel that Breaking GG needs to go to one of these emotional support groups where he's like, Hey guys, I am uh, Breaking GG. I play for Invictus Gaming and I'm addicted to Nidus networks. And then, uh, and then Roddy is sitting there. He's like, hi, Breaking GG. I've got a Phoenix addiction. And then Print F is sitting there. Hi, mate. I've got a Cannon addiction. Coco is like, hi, Breaking GG. I've got a Flower addiction. <laughs> But he is going to knight us once more. Don't think this is going to come as much of a surprise to Raynor. Even though he may not have necessarily scouted it yet. Does that Overlord see it? It does actually. I hope that Raynor is paying attention. He sees a couple of dots on the minimap. Obviously some of them are Overlords. One of them is actually knight us. Raynor sending his units over. There is a Baneling in the mix as well. Banelings deal bonus damage. Ooh, I don't think you keep the knight alive. I really don't think you keep the knight alive. You don't keep the Nidus alive, but apparently enough units come out that Raynor is temporarily going to disengage against. I don't know. I'm not really feeling this. I think once more the numbers are a little bit too similar, but Breaking GG does have a very tiny window where he's got plus one missile attacks and Raynor does not. But the reinforcements have arrived from both sides actually. Raynor now kind of winning that fight on the low ground, but Breaking GG is already in the natural of Raynor. It's just that now it's going to be very hard for the Chinese Zerg to get his forces together. And he's just kind of bleeding out too many units. Also has a few too many minerals in the bank, guys. If you go for an all-in like this, you got to be damn sure that you spend every single penny you have. Sitting on 600 minerals, that's just a few too many to all-in Raynor. You want all-in Raynor, you have to be minus, okay? You have to go into the red. You have to spend money that you don't even have. Reyna shuts down that Nidus as well. All three queens will fall. And it seems that Basilisk will stay undefeated here in the regular season of WTL Codes. Because once Reyna gets the job done here, we are 4-0. And, and that means it's another W for us on the board. That means that we go 7-0 in the regular season. And Reyna, for the first time this season, will get a... Hat-trick. As he gets not one, not two, but three 2-0 victories in a row. Who is this guy? I don't even recognize him anymore. I thought he was our 50% man. Why is Reyna cosplaying like he's Serral, guys? What is this all about? <laughs> I liked Reyna more when he was a 50% guy. You know, I always believed that you have to be yourself. A 50% Reyna was something that we got all very excited over. Zero is 13 and 0. Yeah, but in the last three clan wars, both of them are 6 and 0. So. For three weeks straight, Raynor has been cosplaying like Zero. Pineapple pizza for Raynor. I'm still disappointed that Raynor invited me over to his place to watch football. And he said he was going to cook. And then he got me frozen pizzas from the local supermarket. I mean, I love Raynor, but that one hurt, man. I really thought I was going to get some authentic Italian pasta. I was going to get some sort of very special fancy dinner. Little appetizer into a main course. Nope. Freaking Albert Hein pizzas. I want to say that he has learned from the very best. Because <laughs> when he visited me, I did give him frozen pizzas. But I'm not Italian, you know. He is. <laughs> if he wins Yon Chopping... I'm going to make sure that we have a celebration dinner. And then I want to see him sweat in that kitchen, all right? <laughs> to be fair, Rainer, when he was at my place, he did actually cook somewhat frequently. And he had a couple of nice meals. He was never happy with it himself. <laughs> but I thought they were very good. But then when I visited his place, I got the frozen pizza. That was disappointing. But when he was here, he's made some nice meals. It was his first time hosting someone. You know what's really funny is that Rainer just... Rainer knows me pretty well. As Breaking GG is going to make some sort of a desperation attack here, guys. He uh, does have plus two missile attacks. So that part is nice. But in the end, a ZVZ is a numbers game. And you can't really recover from that failed knight. As he lost too many units, lost too many queens. The economy was way too delayed. 
And Breklin GG knows that the writing is on the wall. GG gets called. Reynor gets the perfect 2 0. Three weeks in a row. Tiny thumbs up there. So he's showing us that not only did he have a fun week, he still knows how to play Starcraft 2. Uh, let me just settle that prediction. Give you guys one more prediction. <laughs> we had some cheaters, guys. We had some cheaters while the prediction game was still open. Some of you guys went for the mass bets on breaking GG. Can I see who the cheaters were? Is that possible? 61% uh, Ah, Melski Loco, cheater! <laughs> cheater, cheater! <laughs> Got you! Alright, so Reyna gets the 2 0. We found a new EVA, guys. We found a new EVA. Uh, our last best of two is a trigger for us as a max set. Our Canadian Protoss trigger versus a max set trigger, max set draw. I'll give you guys 10 minutes, it should be fine. Stop it. Uh, this is not the only time that you guys will see our Canadian youngster. We had a cool interview, by the way. I want to see if I can find that very quickly. I think it was a StarCraft historian. Kind of like that guy. Yeah, he does good. He, I think he does an all right jobby. Let's see if I can find the uh, interview. Yeah, here it is. So, Trigger, uh, thanks so much for... Uh, I think this is a I kind really of a cool it. interview. In case you guys haven't seen it yet, and that's the kind of content that you're uh, interested in. I took a look at it this morning at 7 a.m. Because I woke up ultra early. And I saw this interview and I put it on. And I thought it was nice. i like to see more of Trigger. So, that's the link. Um, let's take a look at player profiles. 69. All right, guys, get it out of your system. Nice, 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 nice. Nice. Everyone thinks it's nice. Nice, nice, nice. That guy's channel is really good. Yeah, I, I like it as well. You're an 82, Rainer. You're back to where you started this season. You're back at 82. Hmm. Max set is 60. Trigger is 69. And we're going to have a little PvP for the stats. Basilisk has, have, uh, or has had one perfect 6-0 so far in the regular season. Let's see if today is going to be our second 6-0. Max said ain't bad, but I kind of feel like he was better two months ago than he currently is. I feel like he had a little spike in his performance, and now he's kind of back to the level that I expected him to play at. So I think Trigger will take this. Uh, one thing I want to say is that this isn't the only time that you guys will see our Canadian boy today on this channel. Later tonight at 8 p.m. Central European Summer Time, which is in exactly five hours from now, he will be playing a best of five against Skillus. Skillus, who's been very unlucky in the big rain bouts. I think Skillus is historically 0 05 or 0 06 in the big rain bouts. Uh, could be his first win today, or perhaps he will get another L. I think that's a very fun PvP, guys. If you guys are. Uh, Interested in PvP. Skillers trigger 200 bucks on the line, 150 for the winner, 50 for the loser in five hours from now. Obviously, uh, real speedy bows are the, the bats are not supposed to be open. As we can do, play intros quickly. Bottom right side, an absolute veteran of the scene, a Chinese legend. It is Invictus Gaming Max Set. Top left side, we're looking at the main base of an absolute animal. Our Canadian Protoss trigger for Basilisk. Uh, I always try to time it that you guys have a lot of time to place in your predictions. And that the games kind of start then. Or if the game is live for two or three minutes, it's not a big deal. Yeah, sometimes games start a little bit earlier than I expect them to. Once in a blue moon, people can take advantage of it and they can cheat. But, you know, it's, it's just channel points. It's imaginary internet points. It's not like you can uh, really do a whole lot with it. You're not being cheated out of a car or a brand new television over here, mate. It's imaginary internet points on the Roddy channel. So I don't think we need to take it overly serious. And uh, you know what, Eva? We found a new cheater, mate. I will stop arresting you from here on out of being the cheater. Nelski Loco. Tried to cheat, but it backfired. <laughs> he thought the game was over, but it wasn't over. <laughs> Poor Melski. Donating 250k to a good cause. Hmm. 
Uh, by the way, shout out to my man Yo for the 103 months. Sorry, mate, I uh, missed it because I was busy casting video games. I have the alerts disabled whenever we are watching uh, games. But thank you, Yo. Very long time. And we also had well underscore 038 for joining our channel for the very first time. So I welcome you with open arms. 103 month resub and a brand new sub, guys. <laughs> Just on the Roddy stream. I was definitely not ignoring you. I was just paying attention to the video games, mate. So we've got a two-gate opener on both sides here. Neither player doing something crazy like dropping that first pylon on the low ground and going for the uh, one-gate fast expand. Unless your name is Max Pax, I really don't recommend doing that on maps like Grasmon, Neo Humanity, Ancient. Just be old-fashioned and go for the double gate on the high ground. One of my favorite drinks, by the way. If you go to a nice place, a good old-fashioned, it can really slap. I haven't had it in a while, because I don't go to a lot of nice places, but, but a nice big ice cube in the middle, oh, those are good. <laughs> those are good. I don't know why my mouse is in the center. I shouldn't do that. Trigger is going for Blink Stalkers of one base, guys. Twilight Council before expand, but at this point, I don't even believe that he's expanding anymore, as he also dropped a third gateway. This is a build that Trigger has done quite a few times, where he will just go, Oh, this is a big scout for Maxet. But, you know what, I really wonder what Maxet does here, because I've been in these situations as well, where at this point you know it's coming, but what can you do? I mean, you can snap your fingers and make an immortal appear, Having a whole bunch of shield batteries doesn't even do that much for you because the stalker number is going to be so high the trigger will blink forward and will one-shot your units. Like, I think even when you know, this is still very, very difficult. I'm very curious to see how this one will play out. Keep an eye on that robo in the top left side, the production tab. Like, the moment the robo is done, you start dreaming about being able to hold. So basically what you want to do is non-stop units if you have extra money while the gateways are obviously waiting to warp in more units you can go for a battery uh, battery overcharge don't use it too early i like that second defensive battery i feel that max head is doing a lot of things right so far to hold but i still don't think he's going to hold robo is done immortal on the way this is where things get very interesting thank you to my man crazy bob as well Max said has stopped at 30 probes. I like it. I feel that Max... Oh, I like the hallucinated stalkers. Yeah, that's smart. I really like the hallucinated stalkers. Because if Trigger sends a full volley of his stalkers into one of these fake stalkers, he misses out on a lot of DPS. Here we go. Forward blink. Trigger gets a real one. Trigger gets a fake one. Trigger gets a real one. Does not quite get the other one. Is now shooting at another fake stalker. Very good play so far by Max said, if you ask me. I like the force fields. And Big Daddy Immortal is here. Very, very good play by Maxet. Generally impressed with his decision making. Trigger needs to be so careful. He's got a lot of low HP stalkers. I don't think he can go for that immortal. I think he was hoping that it was fake, but he knows it's real. He's going to split off one stalker to shoot one time at the immortal, as you guys can see. Activates the barrier. And now he goes for it. YOLO swag, 420. But I love that force field by Maxet. That is a very good force field by the veteran. Trigger obviously realized that he was not going to get that immortal, so he now settles for the stalkers. I still think it looks good for Maxet. I think it looks very, very good for Maxet. Trigger is in trouble. Man, what a... Well, he's, he hasn't quite held yet, but battery overcharge should be available again. Coco, second overcharge right about... No, no. Not in time, but a lot of stalkers go down on the side of our Canadian. Yeah, Trigger is in all sorts of trouble. He's down in army supply. This should normally be a game over. It should be a win for Maxhead, but obviously we thought Rainer was in trouble as well. And Rainer maneuvered his way out of it. He clawed himself out of the hole, but two immortals, two base, three shield batteries. A perfect defense by Maxhead, man. I was generally wondering, like, what is the right thing to do here? Goes for the robo, goes for the hallucinated stalkers. And Trigger is in trouble. Very, very well done by the Chinese veteran. I tip my fedora to him. Trigger tries to get uh, the sentries, but... I think at this point Trigger knows that this is not going to work. Makes one more forward blink, but there is Coco's second overcharge. Trigger is bleeding out stalkers left, right and center. And 
it is not going to be a perfect 6-0 for Basilisk today, guys. It will be Maxet, at the bare minimum, taking a 1-0 lead here. And he just handled this very well. It almost felt that uh, maybe Trigger underestimated Maxet a little bit. And he thought that with this build, he was going to get the job done. If Maxet would have gone Stargate, I think Trigger's build would have absolutely worked. If Maxet would have gone Twilight, it probably would have worked as well. And yeah, with the Robo on time, getting the Immortus out on time. And the initial great hold with the Hallucinated Stalkers. And this was not it for Trigger. There's not really a way to transition out of it. Trigger is committed. I think he knows at this point that he's ultra dead. We are now, I believe, on that uh, Hopium or Copium thing. Hello, Goblin. How nice of one of my Croatian moderators to show up, guys. Actually, the first time that I see Goblin since March 2022, when I still used to pay him. But it's good to see that he hasn't forgot about me. Trigger really wants to get an Immortal, and he does get an Immortal, but in return he's going to lose five Stalkers. This game is over. Trigger knows it. Maxed knows it. You guys know it. Goblin knows it as well. Speaking of Goblin, by the way, you guys will see him in action soon. As he is representing the Platinum Heroes. Uh, PvP, I believe, today. Trigger is doing a good job in shaving off units one by one, but... That doesn't change the fact that it's one base against two bases. Eight minutes into a Legacy of the Void game, you're also gonna start mining out your main. I believe at this point, we're already down to six mineral patches. Might be down to four mineral patches in the near future. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Six mineral patches it is. This is some serious Copium. I do love it. <laughs> it's good to see that uh, Trigger does care, but... I can't really make this any prettier. This was a hockey game, guys. There would be two minutes left in the third quarter, and the score is 7-0 to zero in favor of the Capitals against the Pittsburgh Penguins. But the Penguins are pulling the goalie. So, sure, two minutes left on the clock. They've got one extra guy on the ice right now. This was the NFL. We just entered the two-minute warning. And the score is 63-7. to seven. However, the team that has seven points is on the 45-yard line. So, I'm telling you guys, there is a chance. If this was football, the score is still 0-0. Because nobody ever scores in football. But that's not too important right now. Maxed also has a Dark Sprite. Which means that Trigger is in even more trouble. Because he's got no Robo. I mean, it's over. <laughs> this one is ultra over, but Trigger is uh, absolutely doing his best of trying to make something out of this game. Maxed is now checking to see if there are any hidden bases. He probably thinks at this point this is too good to be true. And something weird must be going on, otherwise this guy would have left a while ago. But no, it, it really is that good, Maxed. As Trigger is trying to get a couple of these Immortals, does get one of them, but obviously... He has no Robo. I believe one of the DTs revealed themselves on the other side of the map. Oh, those guns! Oh, yeah, baby! Give me those guns, Maxet. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I mean, I, right now I'm questioning my uh, sexual preferences. I always thought I was straight, but after seeing those guns, I'll be honest, I'm not sure. I want to see more, baby. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, fun game, a very solid performance there by Maxa. He played well. Not an easy build to defeat. He went for the expand, but I think he made all the correct calls. And the game kind of lingered on for a little while, but it wasn't really going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. Even when your team is down 0-4 and you know that your best of two doesn't really matter, it's, it's cool to see that these guys are still happy. Whenever they pick up a map. Yeah, check Discord real quick if you can. I will. If you're trying to maneuver your way out of an interview, mate, it's not gonna work. You're in trouble. <laughs> I already knew. <laughs> Without even checking Discord, I already knew. These guys trying to weasel their way out of interviews with Roddy. Uh-uh. If the big man tells you to show up, you show up. 
I don't care if your apartment is on fire. I don't care if Nikita needs you to open the door so he can escape. No. You're doing an interview, Rainer. And after that, you can do whatever the hell you want on your Friday. No, it wasn't an inside joke. He's legitimately trying to make his way out of the interview. And I just said no. <laughs> Rainer's hair is not ready. I'll be dead honest, mate. Rainer's hair hasn't been ready for an interview since the summer of 2017. He was still a cute kid back then. And I was uh, I was kind of feeling the hairstyle, but... It's been... Uh, the performance has been uphill. The hairstyle has been downhill. At a very rapid pace. I actually made an appointment, Rainer. Maybe if you uh, want to go on the same day. I'm going next Saturday. Saturday, 10th of June, I believe I'm going. Have I been to the beach? No, I have not been to the beach, but I have played Padel while the sun was shining. And I've also been sitting in my backyard, rubbing my belly with oil and embracing the sunshine. But there is no sunshine today, so that's why I'm here all day. Now, I was going to be here regardless, but it was very sunny in the Netherlands on Wednesday and Thursday. Bet if Jonah asked, he could skip it. That is true, but Jonah also is 23 and 0 for us in Team Leagues. I believe you are 8 and 12, so yes, I do play favorites towards Yona. You win a few more games and maybe you can skip an interview. <laughs> but not today, man. Not today. We are just waiting for the final game Oops, to start between Trigger and Max Set. Score currently 4 and 1, obviously means that Basilisk has improved their record to 7 and 0 in the regular season. Unfortunately for Invictus Gaming, they fell to 0 and 7. But there are still player points on the line. I believe that the official name of the tournament later this year will be Masters Coliseum. Players can qualify for that by winning a bunch of games in the WTL. And they receive player points. So it's very important for Trigger that he wins at least the second game here. So he picks up a few points. Captain Roddy is cruel, but fair. Nah, just making sure, guys. We, we like a bit of content. We like player interviews. All right, absolute final game. Before we get ready for those player interviews, in the top left side, we are looking at the main base of Maxet. Perfect hold in that first game. We got to give credit where credit is due. Even though I am the biased commentator for these boys, in the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of our Canadian, Canadian Protoss. That is a trigger. Now, second game will be on a map with a ramp into the natural it's so obviously this Babylon and you can immediately see that both players are adapting to that and they will go for the low ground pylon into low ground gateway does not mean that you can go for one base all in if that's what you really want to do but it's a little less strong on maps like this than it is on a neo humanity or a grass one or ancient petition to make Ronda the mascot of Basilisk I would be all for that. No. Oh, the Ronda is so sweet. I saw Ronda yesterday or the day before. My brother's wife was walking her. And I just opened the door. Or I came home actually. I went to... Uh, I don't know what I did. I guess we went grocery shopping. And we just arrived. And then I saw my brother's wife walking with Ronda. And I saw the dog already. And she didn't see me yet. And I was like, Ronda! And she was suddenly very happy. I posted it in the Discord. It was cute. I missed the first few uh, seconds of me seeing the dog. By the time I started recording, she already saw me. But yeah, I can. Uh, I believe that in Dream Masters Yon Chopping, it's going to be one big reunion of uh, the Basilisk family. So I'll take this idea and I'll present it to them. And I'll see if I can make Ronda our official mascot. I'm definitely for it. I'm sure that I can convince Rainer as well. Since Trigger is going to spend uh, soon two weeks in the Netherlands at my place, I'll make damn sure that he gets to meet Rico and Ronda too. I'm sure he's going to be on board as well. I think we can make it happen. <laughs> We've got a Nexus going down on the side of Maxet. Meanwhile, Trigger already had his Nexus down and also has his Stargate down. So what is Maxet going? Is he just going to try to go double gate here? Because at this point, Maxet is... yeah. Probably gonna wow, super late Stargate, okay. So Maxet will also drop his Stargate, but it's a whole lot later than the Stargate of Trigger. It's also a whole lot later in the Nexus department. The one advantage that Maxet does have is that he's got Zealot Stalker versus an Adept. 
But what do you really do with that? Now we have a second gateway going down as well. This is like some sort of a weird Phoenix gateway all in with a fake nexus. Because if nothing big happens in this game, guys, if nothing significant goes max at his way in the next 90 seconds, he's actually really far behind. For no real reason. Huh? As the Zealot gets caught in the center of the map by the Adept, obviously Adepts are quicker and ranged units, so they have a lot of micro potential. Maxed will go for the Phoenix, Trigger will go for the Oracle, but the days that a single Phoenix keeps you safe against Oracle are long gone. You can see that Trigger is a little bit concerned about getting all in, as he now drops an ultra quick Robo. You only drop that Robo if you have the feeling that your opponent is all inning you. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, that, this actually is working out in a weird way for... Uh, ooh, no, no, I don't like that stasis. I really don't like the stasis. Now your Oracle is dead. I think it would have been better to immediately recall. You can see the trigger cancels the Robo and goes for a Twilight Council instead, which I think is a smart choice, but one that could backfire. It is smart because if you go Stargate into Robo, you can't really build anything out of your Stargate anymore that's going to keep your probe safe. A Robo doesn't help you to keep your probe safe against Mass Phoenix. So Trigger cancelled it, goes for the Twilight Council, so you can get Blink a little bit quicker. The only downside of all of this though, guys, is that Maxet could very well drop a Dark Shrine. The moment that his Twilight Council is done. And if that happens, well Trigger is going to regret cancelling that Robo. Fortunately for our Canadian boy, that doesn't seem to be happening so far as Blink has been fired up. Ah, Maxed is just kind of getting the best of the mind games of uh, Trigger so far. I like the initial starting build orders a little bit more for Trigger than I liked it for Maxed, but Maxed is just making the correct calls. And then these four Phoenixes will have serious potential. Until you have Blink, it is so hard to prevent yourself from losing probe after probe. Phoenix are fast, Phoenix are tanky, at least in PvP. In the other matchups, they suck. Everything kills them. But in PvP, they're pretty tanky. And you can see Max is just finding more and more damage. He's playing a really solid best of two here, guys. Kudos to the Chinese veteran that is Max at. Someone who's been around since the dawn of day. I played Warcraft 3 with this guy. A lot of Warcraft 3, actually. He was very nice to me. And uh, one summer, when I was a young boy, full of life, I went to China for like six or seven weeks to participate in three different Chinese Warcraft 3 tournaments. And while I was there, I was really hoping that I would get an insane amount of practice, but they didn't really have a functioning ladder. So you had a custom game client, and then you just hoped that people wanted to play games. And almost none of these guys wanted to play games with me, which was very sad. Besides Max said, he was always available. And he played a whole bunch with me, so I want to give him some love for that. I was hoping that I was going to play with Ted and Sky all day every day, but like two or three games against them in five weeks but max said he was a grinder and all these years later he's still going at it hmm? Hmm? hey why aren't you playing in this ruddy maybe i'll play sometime soon lambo i'll play sometime soon if you guys want me to have an appearance in wtl code s we'll make it happen I will get nervous, I will be very stressed out, I won't sleep for a week, but if you guys want to see me play, we can make it happen. Maxed was a human. I was orc, Maxed was human. How about t Lo versus Roddy? Woo! <laughs> I think Dr. Dario has my number. Dario's too good, man. <laughs> Nothing I would rather see. I believe our next match is against Starlight Twinkle. And since Big Pyotr is no longer with them, maybe that's the moment to bust out some Roddy. You guys want to see Roddy against the SSLT? <laughs> uh, Nostra Beef, you have to decide way in advance that I am playing. Ooh, blink there, by the way, by Trigger Snipes, a Phoenix. We cannot just uh, look at a clamor and be like, oh, we're 4 and all. Now Roddy can play. You decide like three or four days in advance what the lineup is. So. If you guys want to see me play on Play Day 8 against SSLT, we have to decide that like three days in advance. <laughs> T 
TLO versus Roddy Ace match would be beyond hype. Yeah. I feel like I'm not made for that, man. <laughs> TLO is built for that, but not Roddy. I'd have a heart attack. <laughs> so you're saying you don't believe Saro and Reyna would win so you can play? That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that we cannot decide that on the fly. We have to uh, decide that in advance. That's all I said. I think this IG would have been the best option of teams left. I don't fear anyone. I fear no man but God. Send me against uh, Onside. You guys think I'm inti intimidated by that Maru dude? <laughs> He's got no idea what's coming for him. Maybe we're waiting all season long to bring out Roddy against Onside. To secure the dub. <laughs> Maru has no idea what he's going up against when he plays against me. Yeah, no, that was heartbreaking. I still sometimes have nightmares about that game against Sulir on Jaganatha. Lambo in the chat. I remember Lambo saying that was the most painful experience he's ever seen. I had one void raid that I f 2 out of position 22 times to deny a Nidus going up in my main base. It hurts. It hurts every time I think about it, but it's okay. That's in the past. This is now. This game has obviously been kind of fun. Max had eventually donated the majority of his Phoenix, but I feel like he got some decent value out of it. Both players right now working towards Stalkers, Zealots, Immortals, and Archons. Max had already has plus two, has a War Prism in the mix as well. A Chinese veteran. He's feeling it. He thinks that this is his moment. Shield batteries are incredibly good when these kind of armies fight against one another but it's hard for truck Ooh, i don't really know if i like this fight for trigger i don't think i like this fight very much it's plus two for max set. it's plus one for trigger we have archons in the mix as well now obviously if max it runs into the natural of trigger that's where it gets uh, bad for the chinese veteran and good for our boy there's a couple of phoenixes still in the mix as well well one phoenix gets picked up immediately trigger is actually doing incredibly good so far as Max said, is just blocking his own units from participating in the fight. And what started off as potentially a very difficult fight is now starting to look like a pretty awesome fight. I'm gonna say the trigger is not quite there yet. But obviously every second that goes by is a good one as trigger feels so confident that he can blink forward. Well, Max had kind of messed that one up. There was some potential there for Max had. But our Canadian boy with an absolutely stunning hold can now blink forward one more time and we can snipe that war prism. Let's go. Send it. Boom. Not quite a one shot, one kill, but... Maxed has gone up to four bases during all of that, but he lost way more while he had the upgrade advantage. Uh, the, way, the reason why Maxed lost that fight as badly as he did is mostly because he had Archons. Trigger didn't, but then the Archons didn't even help out in the Zealot versus Zealot fight. And since Trigger went all out on the Zealot, he obviously had more. And then Maxed also kind of split up his army when he would have benefited a lot more from keeping his units together. So GG gets called. Trigger does get the W in game two. Had to work for it. Was sweating a little. But he will tie things up. And that will do it for the first best of seven. There is one more best of seven coming up. But obviously there is an interview coming up as well. Reyna tried to weasel his way out of an interview. Uh, but that's not going to happen. So this is coming up soon guys. Shutdown against Mondo. Goblin creator DNS Nightmare. I will be casting that as well. But what I'm going to do first is take a little break, call the boys, have a little interview, and then we are officially done with the first best of seven. So stick around. I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. And obviously, if you guys have any burning questions for either Rainer, Trigger, or Serral, feel free to post them in the chat by the time I come back. And maybe I can ask a couple. So I'll see you guys in give or take three minutes. Uh, obviously, last thing, by the way, that is important, is that we are now 7-0, guys, in the regular season. And unfortunately, Invictus Gaming, they are 0-7. I'll take 7-0. That ain't all that bad. I'll see you guys soon.